I'm Lisa Anderson, a Director of Young Adults for Focus on the Family, an international ministry dedicated really to helping families thrive in Christ. And uh, I head up Boundless, our young adult ministry at boundless.org, and I'm host of The Boundless Show, which is a weekly podcast and radio show for college through 30-somethings, mostly single. I took over public relations for Focus, worked where I was and, and served the Lord there, met great people doing that. And while I was leading that team, one of my clients at Focus was this um, department called Boundless, and they worked with young adults. And it was run by three married guys with kids. And a uh, pretty funny story in that I was dating at the time, and they would just kind of start hearing some of my stories. And as I was telling stories of my escapades dating, they said, you know, Lisa, um, it sounds like you're dating some losers, and <laughs> we probably have some advice for you and things that you need to do differently. And I was all defensive and offended, like, what? I'm you know, dating well, I'm a Christian, I know how to date. And they're like, no, not really. And so I started reading uh, information and articles from this boundless.org, Focus on the Family's website for young adults. And I credit Boundless for transforming my view on marriage and the process of getting to marriage as a single person. Because I would say marriage, in my 20s was probably my plan C or D. I thought I had so many other things to do before then and whatever, I had all the time in the world. And I really got a vision for what God says in the Bible about marriage. The Bible begins with marriage, it ends with marriage. There's a lot of marriage in between and not all of them are good. <laughs> and so it was really a lesson to me to say, what does God honor about this? You know, Hebrews 13, 4 says marriage is to be honored by all, and that includes single people. And so for me, it was a very big conviction to realize that I had not honored marriage in the way I was pursuing my own life. And so um, not long after that, as I was talking to these guys, they said, you know, Lisa, we are thinking of starting a podcast and you're single and like to talk. Do you want to host it? And I'm like, sure, I'll give it a try. And sure enough, God used it. And that was 10 years ago. And I've been hosting the show since then. Here I am. I, I lead a ministry for young adults. I talk about relationships all the time. I was actually in an abusive relationship when I, you know, as, as, uh, as I was dating. And it was like, um, I just had blinders on. And this is why I say, especially when it comes to dating, um, dating cannot be a solitary pursuit. You need to date in community. And I don't care if you're dating in a traditional sense of you just met someone at church or in your small group, or if you're dating online or, or whatever, you need a team around you who is going to have objective eyes on your relationship and be willing to help you navigate the ins and outs and, and observe that person's character, observe how you relate to that person. Because I'll be honest, um, you start dating and you get kind of crazy. And it's, uh, <laughs> I don't know, it's like, it's something like takes over you and you think, here I am, you know, if I were to assess all personality tests, I am the highest like thinker on all of them. And so I think, you know, oh, I'm super rational. I can handle this. I'm going to look at this super objectively. Nope. I start dating and I just get crazy and I'm just way into this guy and I lose all sense of like just normal, uh, common sense. And so, I've realized even in retrospect that I need people around me. In fact, one of the pieces of advice I give to young adults is to say, if you're going to get into a relationship, you pick three people in your life um, who you know have their heads on straight, who love you, who are godly, who have great wisdom, and you tell them, uh, you tell them that they are going to speak into your dating relationship. And if all three of them together agree that the person you're dating is not good for you, you will cut it off, no questions asked. I think a lot of young adults um, need to hear, even beginning in their uh, teenage years for sure, what is the purpose of dating? And really the purpose of dating is to find a great mate. A lot of people treat it very um, like it's it's just something recreational and, and unless you wanna do pizza dates for the next 12 years, you wanna kind of get a game plan and not, not that you make it into a science and all weird, it's kind of a delicate balance. But also, you don't want to just be um, picking and choosing and discarding hearts uh, as you go along the way. You want to honor a person as a brother or sister in Christ. And I tell young adults that. I say, you know, you can go out and you can date, but do it biblically and do it intentionally. And realize that this is a brother or a sister in Christ that you're
you're dealing with. And if you were to break up someday, would you be able to sit next to them in church and still be in relationship with them and have it all be okay? Uh, because I think now we date and we um, get way too emotionally, even physically involved, and then uh, hearts are broken and breaking up is like a divorce because we've put way too much connection for the amount of commitment that's there. And so I always say, you know, you need to be in a position where you can part ways, you can say you have left that person in a better spot than when you started dating them. You have poured into their life and honored them in a way that you can both kind of go your own way and realize, hey, it didn't work out, but that's totally okay. Um, and I think it's too often that young adults um, have taken on this idea of, well, I need to see what I can get out of this relationship. I need to see, you know, what is this relationship going to do for me? Uh, movies messed us up because they told us that, you know, we need someone to complete us. And the only person that can complete us is Jesus Christ. And so in, as long as we're looking to other people to solve our heart problems, to solve our identity problems, our wounds, um, we're going to be met with failure. Uh, we have to understand who God is and who he says we are, and then we can be whole and uh, move into a relationship that ultimately is gonna be stronger. Um, but if we're looking for someone to fill in all the holes and all the things that we're looking for, uh, we're gonna find ourselves failing in that respect. So I have a lot of young adults tell me, okay, Lisa, give me the blueprint. Like, what do I need to know? What are the mistakes I have to avoid in dating? And I always say, well, there are a number of mistakes you can make, and I've made a lot of them. But I actually wrote in my book, The Dating Manifesto, a chapter that I titled, Five Reasons Your Love Life's a Disaster or Doesn't Exist. Exist. And they're kind of like the five big offenders that I see among single adults. The first one is this idea of you're searching for the one. Um, you know, we, we hear in culture this idea of I just need to find the one, I need to find my soulmate. And really, do soulmates exist? I mean, it's not even a biblical concept. And so I tell folks, you know, this is actually pretty bogus overall, because where do you see in scripture, you see uh, people like going to wells to find their mates, you see people uh, using other people to find their mates, um, you see people killing for mates, we don't recommend that, obviously, <laughs> at Boundless, but, um, but never do we just do the stars align and you find this person that's the one person in the world meant for you. And I think what it does is it sets young adults up for two problems. Um, the first is a complete paralysis. They're not going to date because they're afraid of not choosing, finding and choosing the one because they think it has to be this one person and what if they pick the wrong person? What do they do if you know they find someone who's like okay but it's not the one and they don't want to settle and they don't want to uh, make the mistake of not finding that one person that they're meant to be with and so they don't date or they date kind of indefinitely but never end up choosing and, uh, and actually settling down. The other problem it can create is they can rush into a relationship, get all excited about someone, maybe make a commitment to that person, but then the first bump in the road, they're like, uh-oh, did I not choose right? Did I not, what this, it, it's supposed to be easier than this. What's the problem? And so then they either break up the relationship or if they're married, they head for divorce. And so um, there's this idea of, uh, that I've heard other Christian psychologists talk about that just, you know, you've got you've to find a person. There are, there are a number of people in the world, and I would say conservatively, let's say a hundred people <laughs> in your sphere that you probably could build a life with, have kids with, fall in love with, be attracted to, serve God with, they're all good. They're all potential choices. You have to pick one of those people, choose to commit to them. You put the blinders on at that point, and then that person becomes the one. And for the rest of your life, you're focused on that person, pouring into that person, standing shoulder to shoulder with that person, and serving the Lord together. Um, the second reason I think people fail in dating is that they just haven't grown up. They haven't committed to being adult. Uh, dating is for adults, it's not for kids. And so, um, so many uh, young adults are not in a position to take a relationship uh, the distance, to take it to the finish line. They are, I tell young adults, work on yourself and become that person that would be the person you would want to marry. You need to get healthy first and move there. If you are saddled in outrageous debt, you probably need to be working on that, you know, or, or at least concurrently be working on that. So um, be a grown up, 
get your life together, uh, trust God in the process, become healthy, and be in a position to date and then to marry. Uh, the third reason is people just aren't dating, and that sounds <laughs> just so ridiculous and so assumptive, but um, the fact is we just are sitting around in churches and in singles groups and everyone's sitting shoulder to shoulder, but it's like a junior high class. No one is willing to actually step out, take a risk, and say, you know what, I think you're a really interesting person and I'd love to get to know you more. Would you be willing to do dinner or would you be willing to do coffee? We're doing all this weird junior high action of, can you go ask her if maybe she might ever like me and be, you know, and it's like, what are we doing? Passing notes? I mean, for Pete's sake. So um, we're just not dating and you have to be willing, uh, guys especially. I'm a, I'm a big fan of guys taking leadership in this area. Put your cards on the table. The worst you can do is be rejected but you want to know. If a girl's not interested, you don't want to be asking that question or wondering for eight, nine years. Just put it out there. Um, guys who take risks are the ones who are going to know sooner rather than later. And the girls who recognize that, uh, you're going to set yourself apart uh, from 80% of the guys who are out there who are just hiding in the shadows, unwilling to take a risk. So uh, be willing to date. And ladies, be willing to respond. Give a guy a chance. You know, you don't have to commit to marrying him. You're doing coffee with him. So uh, I have so many women who will say to me, well, you know, I, I just want to marry like a John Piper or a Francis Chan. And I'm like, well, first of all, um, they are already married and they are not options for you. Secondly, uh, they were not John Piper and Francis Chan when they were 22 years old. They were probably just some kind of like jerky guys who were growing up, figuring things out, <laughs> and they had to mature into adulthood. So ladies, uh, give guys a chance. Another reason uh, that folks are having trouble with dating is they are stuck in a friend relationship and this is where I call um, you know two a guy and a girl become friends and then one of them let's just say the girl in this instance starts like liking him so they're kind of on the uh, uh, the wave that they're friends but she kind of starts developing feelings for him well that is problematic because he just thinks they're friends and she's hoping for something more and I actually had a friend uh, who did this for seven years so she hung out in this friendship hoping that it would turn into something else because she watched all of the romantic comedies of the 80s and 90s where this happened and became successful, you know, and the girl got the guy. Um, but then somewhere down the road, the guy's like, hey, you know, what do you think about Rachel? And she's like, what about Rachel? And he's like, well, I'm thinking of asking her out. And then all of a sudden, it's like a tear fest. It's, it involves like five pints of Ben and Jerry's because uh, she's devastated <laughs> that she basically gave up all that time and commitment for a guy who never had the intention of asking her out. And that's where I say, you know, you have to protect your heart. You have to be in a spot where, you know, he's he's willing and he's able to ask you out if he wants to. But if he doesn't, you can't be giving up all your time and attention to him. I mean, I know girls who um, are talking to guys, you know, at all they're available to them. They're providing emotional support. They're providing companionship. They're providing, I mean, I, I've known girls that have done a guy's laundry or have helped him decorate his apartment because they just think, if I just prove that I'm this amazing girl, he's going to wake up and see what's right in front of him. And it doesn't happen that way. And so they end up um, being devastated by that. And then the, uh, the fifth reason that I see um, with folks is that their dating is just kind of directionless. So we talked about they're not dating. Well, then they may be dating, but it's directionless. And this is where um, I would say and call out the 12-year the relationships that are just kind of humming along at a steady pace. Maybe they have developed a lot of connection. Uh, you know, now she's friends with his mom and she spends holidays with him. And, um, but they just have not defined the relationship in a way that kind of establishes where both of their hearts are and where this relationship is going. And unless you get definition, you are at risk of moving into um, making the relationship sexual 
sexual, you're at risk of this is where cohabiting relationships end up because, you know, she's going to hold on and hope that he's going to commit at some point, but she better give a little bit more right now. Um, meanwhile, he's kind of just getting what he wants, and so it's okay. And it happens with women too. And so um, this is the a relationship should always be moving towards marriage if it's meant to be, because ultimately um, that's the, the relationship that a dating relationship should move towards. And so if it's not, you have to sit, both people have to uh, take a step back and say, where is this going? If it's not going anywhere, it's time to take a break or break the relationship off entirely to give both parties objective eyes on the situation and the ability to discern whether or not to move forward. We really exist um, to encourage young adults uh, in their season of transition, which, you know, young adults in their 20s are making some of the biggest decisions of their lives, uh, whether education, career, understand what it means to live out a biblical worldview, date with purpose. And so we're really empowering them to uh, take ownership of their faith and move forward with confidence. God is love and love comes from God. In 1 John, the Bible tells us that God is not only all loving, but that he actually is love itself. The heart of the Parent Compass television show is to bring the transforming love of God to families everywhere. In every Parent Compass episode, true stories reveal family struggles and how their lives were radically changed by the love of God. Parent Compass, an award-winning television series, is completely funded by people like you. If you have been touched by God and you want to share God's love to others, would you please pass it on? Jesus tells us to go into all the world and to tell about Him. With your donation, you allow us to take this television show into many different nations and in many different languages, free of charge. And a portion of your donation goes to Parent Compass Outreach to feed starving children. Your gift does so much. To make your tax-deductible gift, go to parentcompass.tv forward slash donate. That's parentcompass.tv forward slash donate. And thank you for sending love and hope around the world.